320 says now to him. Come on, somebody. It's not to you. Come on, somebody. Come on, now to him who is able. Come on, somebody. He's able now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. Come on. Does anybody believe that this is the year where your God is getting ready to go begin to put your thought right there, family. Just begin to put your thought right there on the, on the thing that's pulling you away from Jesus right now. Down to him who is able to deliver me out of the hands of the enemy. Now to him who is able to remove the pain that's in my life. Now to him who, who's able to bless my family way more above than what I can do. Now to him who is able to keep bread on my table. Now to him who is able to protect me. Now to him. I don't know what you I don't know what you need God to do in your life right now. But I do believe that God is saying, I need your voice to believe and say it now to him. Now to him. Now to him. Now my job, come on somebody. No, no, I love my beautiful wife, but not my wife, come on somebody. I love my kids, but not my kids. Now to him. Move in this place, Holy Spirit. Move in our life right now, Holy Spirit. Down to him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Oh, come on. Come on, anybody believe that God is ready to do something exceedingly, abundantly? As I was in worship, family, I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, if it has a pulse, it's still breathing. If it has a heart, if it has a beat of the heart, it's still breathing. Now to him, now to him who's able to do exceedingly. Are you ready for the word, family? Come on, if you, if you have your Bibles, family, go ahead and turn to Luke 10. I'm ready to jump in this word, come on. I've been staring at this text for a while now. If you got your Bible, it's going to be on the screen. Luke 10, verse 38. We're kicking off a new series to, to begin this incredible year. Come on, 2023, family. Come on. It's going to be your best year ever. Do you believe that, family? Come on. Come on. You got to claim it, family. You, you got to claim it. It's not about your feelings. Come on. It's not about your emotions, come on. But it's all about what God is saying in your life. This will be your best year ever because it's your best year spiritually. It is your best year that you're gonna be connected to your father. It's gonna be the best year that you ever sat down and Jesus ministered to the spirit, to the pain, to the emotions, to the physicality of what God is getting ready to do in your life. This will be your best year ever. I'm telling you, you got to wake up in the morning and stare that giant in the face and say, this will be my best year ever. You're going to lose me right now. This will be my best year ever. My family's blessed. Come on, somebody. I am the head. I'm not the tail. This will be my best year ever. All right, let's get to the text, family. I'm screaming at you. But we're kicking off a new series, Above and Beyond. I'm excited about our 21 days of prayer and fasting that kicks off tomorrow. Come on, I'm telling you. Please join us. You have some more information, but we have resources for you. Join us on our virtual prayer call beginning at 7 a.m. in the morning. I'm telling you, family. Uh, Pastor Brenda already said it's time to feast. It is time to feast. I'm telling you. Maybe you're hungry. Maybe you're
you feel like you're running empty. And I'm telling you, God has a table prepared for you this year. If you would just sit with the master, he's ready to feed you. You're getting ready to get stronger than you have ever been before. You're getting ready to run faster than you have ever run before. You're getting ready to touch some things that you have never touched before. I'm just telling you that there's a seed inside of you that needs to be fed. Go sit at his table. Woo! I'm telling you, go sit at his table. I'm telling you, there's some new vision that's getting ready to come your way. You're getting ready to think things that you have never thought before. You're getting ready to write some things that you have never created before. There's a freshness that's coming in this place. There's a freshness that's coming in this place. The Holy Spirit is ready to blow your way that he has ever blown before, but he's blowing at the table. My gosh, he's blowing at the table. He's not blowing over there. He's not blowing over there but he's blowing at the table. And he said, just come sit with me and I'll blow on your life. Just come sit with me and I'll blow fresh revelation. Just come sit with me. I'll blow something in your life that will transform your mind. It will heal you. It will deliver you. It will bring miracles in your life. If you would just sit with me, my God. Woo! I rebuke the spirit of busyness in this place. I rebuke it off your life right now. I rebuke the spirit of running over here and running over there and running in your mind and trying to do this and trying to do that. But in this season, I'm sitting, my God. Woo! In this season, I'm going to sit with Jesus. In this season, I'm going to take my time and sit with Jesus because what he has is for me. Luke 10, 38. Catch my breath. We've been in the gym, right, babe? And in the Luke 10, chapter 10, verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, there came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister, Mary, sat at, somebody say, sat at the Lord's feet. Listening to what he taught. But Martha, but Martha was distracted by, by the big dinner she was preparing. The big dinner. Yeah, yeah, your your vision board. Come on. What 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 you're trying to produce this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That big dinner. Yeah, beautiful stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Martha got distracted about what she wanted to produce. I'll get into it later. I'm stepping on toes this year, family. We going in this family. She was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all of the work? Tell her to come and help me. This is not fair, God. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all of these details. There is only one thing. Somebody put one finger in the air for me. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. Whew. And it will not be taken away from her. One thing. Not many things, one thing. Many details running through your, in your head right now, but God wants you to focus on one thing. What's the one thing in your life right now? What's the one thing that God is telling you about right now? Not the many details that flutters your mind throughout the week, but the one thing. The one thing, the one thing, the one thing. When you discover the one thing, the enemy cannot take the one thing from you. The enemy would love to snatch a lot of details out of your life. There's one thing that the enemy can never touch, and that's the devotion to your father. The one thing, the one thing, the one thing, the one thing. If you're taking those family, that's actually the title for today. Somebody say, only one thing. Only one thing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for the opportunity to sit at your feet today. We know that you have a word that will, that will make us stronger, make us better, make us wiser. 
We come today with expectation, Father. We want to leave this place better than we have arrived. You met us here. You have already been here. That your, that your spirit is moving in here. That you're touching us, that you're giving us revelation even right now. There's one thing that you have for us. Release it today. We honor you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Can we put our hands together for our worship team? Incredible, incredible. I want to go ahead and dismiss our C kids, I mean, celebration youth, our middle school and high school. Happy New Year, family. It's so good to see you guys. You know, I've been screaming at you for the last five minutes. A happy new year. It's a new year. It's going to be your best year ever. See, what I love about this time of the year, family, is that, is that we all share a common interest to kick off the new year. I love hearing people write vision boards and create vision boards. I love to hear people, New Year's sort of resolution that this is going to be the year where I create and I, I step out and I, I have boldness and I, my faith is increasing. We share common interests. And one of the quotes that I love in this, in this year is, every action you take is a vote for the person you wish to become. See, see we, we share common interests because we're, we never stay the same. Come on, somebody. You are an evol evolving creature. We're all evolving. And our hope that we have today is, is that we're evolving into the very thing that God wants us to be. Can I, can I step on your toes a little bit, family? I'm not interested in what you want to do this year. I'm more interested in who you are becoming this year. Because I, it's all about who you are becoming because in order to become something, we have to take some action steps. We, we, we got to make sure our mindset is focused. See, see, in order to become something, I have to have intentionality focused this year on the one thing that God is calling me to do. We all, and in this text, there's, what I love about this text with, with Murray and Martha, that these are two individuals who have a common interest in taking an action step. We have Martha and then we have Murray in, and what I love about the action steps and as we're transitioning from 2022 and crossing over to 2023, what is your one action step that you're taking right now? What is the one thing that God is speaking to you? Because if I want to become and evolve into who God is calling me to be and has created me to be, I cannot think the way that I thought in 2022 and going into 2023. I cannot have the same mindset that I had in 2022 going into 2023. Come on, somebody. I can't even talk the same that I way that I talked in 2022 going into 2023. Because in order to do better, I must know better. In order to do be better, I must, in, my fact, in order to become who I am, I must do the very thing that God is calling me to do. See, God is calling you to do some incredible things. And I wrote here in my notes, family, in order to become who God called me to be, I must stay focused on the one thing. On the one thing. See, see, in this text, fam, and I want to break it down a little bit because we have two individuals. See, see, we have one who is concerned about the work of the Lord. We have another one who's actually concerned about the Lord of the work. See, see, so you can be so focused in on the work in your life, the life the ministry in your life. But we have Murray, who's more concerned about actually sitting with the Lord of the work. See, see, one is very busy, but one is actually sitting. One is handling all of the details, but one is actually sitting with the one who knows all details. See, see, we see, this is a beautiful picture because we live in a society family where we celebrate busyness. We, 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 we applaud and give accolades for busyness. But God has not called you to be busy. God called you to be productive. Yeah. 
to have fruit in your life. And only and only way to produce fruit, you got to sit with the right tree. You got to be connected to the right branch. You got to be connected to the right one. You got to be connected to God. See, see, what I love about this text, I love this text, family, because one is worrying about producing while the other one is, wor- is actually valuing the producer. See, see, we can, we can get caught up in the, in the kicking off the year about what am I producing in this year? What does God want me to produce and create in this year? And that's a beautiful picture. That's a beautiful thought. But we can miss actually having an encounter with God because our mind is running of what we can produce and actually sitting with the one who's the producer. Because everything begins with Jesus. See, one has her eyes on her errands of life. Well, one has her eyes on making the bread, while the other one is actually sitting with the bread, the bread of life. See, see, don't get so caught up this year, family, getting caught up in what you can produce for God and actually finding time to sit with the one who is the creator. See, see, we, 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 what, what can I produce as a father? What, what can I provide for my family and as a leader? What, 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 what can I bring on a table to inspire you? But the more I sit with God for vision and creation and, and, and what I sit with God, there's the flow that's happening. See, this is a year, come on, Pastor Brenda, where God is saying about alignment. Come on, we've been, we've been speaking this thing to one another that God is shifting some things. If we can get the order right, Right, and sit with him long enough, we will never run in deficiency because we're connected to the fountain that never runs empty. So we just stay connected. The alignment will always flow. See, we got a lot of people in here and a lot of people in life who are running low because they're not connected to the right fountain. You're connected to your own self. And when you connect yourself to, connect yourself to your own self, you will run in frustration. Come on. You will be depleted with thought. Come on, somebody. You will be depleted with solutions. Come on, somebody. You will find yourself running empty. But if you will sit long enough, that's it. If you will sit long enough with him, you will live a life that never runs empty. His word says in Ephesians that he's ready to do above and beyond in your life, but that only happens through alignment, and alignment only happens to the one who chose to sit long enough. I've been sitting with him. Come on. One thing I desire, come on, family, is to dwell in his house, is to Sit, sit with him long enough. Does anybody have a desire in here to lay at the feet of Jesus long enough to get the very thing that I need for my life? Yeah. To sit long enough. This, this society has created a, a, a rhythm in our life where we don't want to sit long enough. That we want things right now. That, we, that, that nobody wants to get in a crock pot anymore. <laughs> that we got microwaves, come on. We got the, the air fryer now, come on, that our kids use all the time. Everything has to be so quick, and then we want the next thing, and we get it, and then we want the next thing, and we move on, and we have a busy lifestyle of running and chasing and grabbing, and just how you move in life sometimes, your mind is moving the same way as well. You got a thought over here, then you got a thought over there, and you, I can do this. We all got ADHD when it comes sometimes to our mindset. Come on, somebody. It's, it's because of the society that we live in. Yeah. It's that we always have to be running. Uh-huh. Living and born and raised in D.C., I'm used to an environment that teaches me how to run fast, how to think fast. But the more I sit with God, then my habits begin to change. Yeah. In order for your habits to change, you have to change your habitat. Yeah. 
And maybe you're in the wrong habitat in 2022 that you're around the community that's always teaching you how to run fast and always teaching you how to go touch this. And God is saying it's time to make sure you are planted in the right habitat, in the right community, in the right ecosystem. Because if you're planted in his ecosystem, he gives above and beyond in your life. I believe God is changing your habitat this year. Your habits are out of line because your habitat is out of line. And when you change your habitat, your habits will begin to change. Could it be that Martha was in a wrong habitat? But Murray caught the right habitat and saw that this is an encounter that I I cannot miss. When you see, when you see the encounters that God is laying in your life, you will learn how to say no to certain things. I believe that this is the year where you will learn how to say no better. Say it right now. No. no. Say it again. No. no. You've been saying yes to too many things. I p- preach that to myself right now. Learn how to say no better this year. Matter of fact, learn how to say I can't, and you, you can use can't, because some of you, you can use that language, family. We teach our sons, don't say can't, and now when they get to adulthood, and now they're running fast and doing this, because as parents, we've been taught to don't use the word can't. No, you have to learn how to use the word can't, because you're saying yes to all of this, and you can't give your wife attention. You're saying yes to all of this, and you don't spend time with your kids. I'm preaching to myself right now. I have to learn how to say, I can't do that right now because I got to keep my mind focused on the one thing. I can't release the seed that God has placed inside of me if I'm saying yes to everything that's in my life. That God has placed a seed inside of you. If you sit with him long enough, he will affirm you, he will correct you, he will remind you, he will teach you, he will show you. If you sit long enough with him, he will remind you while the enemy is yelling, God is whispering. The enemy has been yelling at you about what you can't do. But God is whispering to you to learn how to say no to this and say yes to this so you can stay seated long enough. God is ministering to your mind in this season. We live in a society where a lot of people want to preach to the heart. Preach to the heart. Emotions. Passion. Come on, man, Pastor Brent, we're some passionate people. And you can be very passionate about something, but understand this, God wants to preach to your, your heart But God also wants to preach to your mind because the enemy is after your mind. And the enemy knows if I can destroy your mind, if I can disrupt your mind, you will never evolve or become who God called you to be. Because his word says it this way, as a man thinketh, so shall he be. If I can keep you from thinking it, you will never evolve in it. If I can keep you from thinking it, that you are not a great husband, that you're not a great wife, that you're not a great leader, that this year won't be successful, that you will always be depleted. If the enemy can live right here, he can stop you from being the impactful person that God has called you to be. So even when you don't feel it, speak it. It is not based on your emotions. <laughs> it is based on your obedience. <laughs> it's not based on how you feel about it. It's not based on what your reality is saying. Your bank account might not look like it, but I'm a millionaire. Come on, Pastor Brenda. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean God is saying not be obedient to it. And God is calling you to a level of obedience in this year. Because when you learn how to be obedient to something that you don't see, it raises your faith, but it also shows God that he can trust you. If I can trust you in a small season, oh my gosh, I feel it in here today. If I can trust you in a small season when you don't see it, when I can trust you in a small season when you don't hear it, when I trust, can I trust you in a small season when your feelings don't matter, but you heard it from your God, and the only way to hear it from your God. You got to sit long enough with him. You got to meditate long enough with him. And even when you don't feel it, I even feel Jacob in here right now. Maybe you've been wrestling with some things long enough, but you got 
to hold on to your master. Hold on to your savior until you bless me, Lord God. I'm going to sit long enough till I get healed. I'm going to sit long enough till I can forget that pain. I'm going to sit long enough till I get my miracle. I'm going to sit long enough. I'm not, hold, I'm not releasing your hand because I need it in this year. Not another year where I go by without getting a blessing that you told me, God. So I hold on. I hold on. I don't know who that word is for today, but hold on even in the pain. Hold on even in the frustration. Hold on. Don't let go because what God has for you is for you. Focus on the one thing this year. Focus on the one thing this year. God is not worried about all of the many details that's going on in your life because he's all, he knows them already. He's just calling you to a different level of obedience. He's calling you to a higher level of obedience. See, 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 what I love about this text, family, is that it's that one was focused and one was distracted. But the distraction was from a good place. It wasn't like it was a sinful distraction. She had the right intentions, Pastor Brent. She, she, her heart was in the right place, but she was still distracted. See, see, regardless if you're distracted, you, you got to make sure what is distracting me in January from keeping me from sitting at the Savior's feet? What's rambling in my head right now that, that's keeping me from sitting at Jesus' feet. What was stealing my time in this that last year that I can't afford? I mean, my, my, my mind can't afford it. Come on. My, my, my kids can't afford it. Come on, somebody. My, my wife can't afford for me to live a life of me not spending enough time of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yes. It's not about your work family. It's more about the quality time that you're sitting with Jesus. See, 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 Martha could have easily said, I'm preparing something. Mm, I felt that. Because, because a lot of us in here, dude, we have an incredible church. Whether you're, 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 you're part of this church, you work for this church, and your own life, you're incredible people. You do incredible work. We all have a ministry. We all have a purpose. We all have a a calling. It doesn't matter what initials in front of your name, pastor or not. You have a calling on your life. You've been preparing something to give to God. As you're creating and writing out your vision plan for this year, you're creating something that I want to prepare for God. So we can live a life. Hear this, family. We can live a life. Where, where we put all of our focus and attention on that. And here's what I found out in life, family, that, that we can live a life like that. And then when it happens, you're still unsatisfied. You still don't have any joy. You're still frustrated. Because here's why. Because anything created out of the will of God will never satisfy you. Just because the intention is right, if it's not if it's not connected or in alignment to Him, the anointing can never flow. And when the anointing flows, joy comes. When the anointing flows, pure peace and happiness. Come on, somebody. And here's what God is saying in this year. Maybe you've been living a life where you're looking for satisfaction, but you're looking for satisfaction away and out of the will of God. And and only to understand the will of God, you got to sit with him long enough. You got to sit with him long enough. The mothers of the house used to say, you got to tarry with God. (laughs) We don't do that anymore. That's a churchy word. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a worship sir. We just gonna sit yes. and sit yes. until he speak. We're not gonna move until he speak. I, I believe that's what this 21 days of prayer and fasting is gonna teach you. Maybe you've been spending time in prayer and you're like, God, you're not speaking. I read your word. I'm not feeling anything. Come on, anybody? The pastor too. Come on, yeah. 
I don't feel in any God. It's boring. Maybe your mind slipped. You start thinking about the bills and the kids. Come on, somebody. Amen. We can be honest and real. Amen. Come but God is teaching you to sit. Sit with him. Amen. Sit with him until you get what you came to get. Yes. Sit with him long enough till you see another side of God that you have never experienced before. Yes. Sit with him long enough till you get a revelation that's going to change your life. Sit with him long enough that you begin to change the objectory of your family. Come on, somebody. Sit with him long enough where you begin to, where you begin to receive something that your grandkids, your great-great-grandkids will begin to experience something. Sit with him long enough. This is what God is speaking. Anthony, you would just sit with me long enough. My blessing just doesn't stop at you. My blessing continues going. Sit with him long enough that what God shows you systems in your life that don't run empty that it keeps going. That's the blessing of God. It shows you systems in life. That the system that you that God is showing you, that it continues to flow and go. I just believe that God is getting ready to show you some fresh revelation that's going to change your life if you would just sit with him long enough. Sit with him long enough. Sit. Don't get distracted in the season. Because family, as I get ready, I'm going to give you the three points. I have to get ready to close out soon. Because in January, family, it's a great opportunity to sow seeds. It's a great opportunity to sow seeds. Because all of us have seeds inside of us. As the farmer, as I was praying it out, just sow seeds in, in the season, Anthony. But in order to sow seeds, you got to learn how to get in a low place. You will never experience a harvest in a high place if you never get with God and sit with him in a low place. See, see, we live in a society now that where everybody wants to experience a harvest in a high place. But that seed has to be germinated in a low place. That seed has to get down in a low place and go into a dark place and it begins to go behind the scenes and go behind the curtains and it's doing this magic when no one sees what's going on. This is the unseen realm. No one sees the pain that you're crying out. No one sees the tears that you're shedding. No one sees or understands, but all you see is where you and God, my God, in a low place, someone sees. I don't know what's going on, God. I don't know how I'm going to make it, God. I don't know what's going to happen. My heart is broke. What's going on with my family? What's going on with my career? And God would take your tears for the seeds that you've been sowing, that a harvest is getting ready to come. If you would just meet me in a low place, if you would just meet me in a valley, and if God would say, I would take your tears and give you a harvest in this year. In a low place. In a low place. Sow them seeds in a low place. I don't know who for your business, my God. Sow those seeds in a low place. No, no, we're not talking about a mountain right now. We're not talking, we're talking about some people who are in a valley, who's learning how to pray in a valley, who's learning how to prophesy in a valley, who's learning how to affirm the very things that God is getting ready to do in your life in a valley place. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to some people who are in a valley right now, who's going through some stuff right now. Can you still sing better when you're in a valley? Come on. Can you still prophesy better when you're in a valley? Can you still preach when you're in a valley? Can you still write when you're in a valley? Can you still pray when you're in a valley? Can you still speak when you're in a valley? Can you still teach when you're in a valley? This is a generation who's been through in a valley that God is saying, I can trust you because you never left me in a valley. This is not for people who've been on a mountaintop. This is a calling for people who learn how to trust God yes. in a valley. Yay, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, yeah, I learned how to not to fear the enemy because I went through the valley. Come on. I learned how to prophesy and speak over that giant because I learned how to do it in the valley, in the valley, in the valley. It's in the valley where you get a new weapon. Come on. It's in the valley where God sharpens your weapon. It's in the valley where God teaches you how to pray a different way because the weapon that you use in the last season doesn't work in this season. But in this valley, against that giant, you need a new weapon. Come on, somebody. You need a new weapon, yeah. 
You need a weapon that you have never used before. You need to you need to go into your tool bag. And God is showing you, yeah, 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 yeah. That weapon that you used a couple years ago, it's not working. It's not working. Sit with me long enough and I'll show you something that's deeper down inside of you. Sit with me long enough and I'll show you what I placed inside of you. Sit with me long enough and I'll give you the revelation that you need in order to overcome that mountain that you're looking to climb. Sit with me long enough. And I'll show you, Anthony, what I'm getting ready to do. Sit with me long enough, Julius. Come on. Yeah. Sit with me long enough, Leah. Come on. Sit with me long enough, Melody. I'll call all your names out of here. I know God is speaking to you right now. Sit with me long enough. The one thing I desire, you can find me this year, is sitting at the feet of my Savior. Come on. You won't find me over there. You won't find me over there. But you can find me at the feet of my Savior. Because everything you need is found down here. Yes. Everything that you need is found right at his feet. Jesus. Everything that you need is found in a place like this. Not like this. The society teaches us how to walk. Ah, like this. Perfect. Everything is going well. Blessed and highly favored. Yes, my family. Come on, we all know the church adequate. Everything in my life is going good. This is the side. This is what they teach us. But the more I look and read the scriptures, I see people who learn in a low place, in a transparency place, in a raw place, in a shame place. And past mistake place. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 God, yeah. The stuff that you want to sweep under the rug, God is saying, no, come meet me under the rug. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I want to minister to you at. Because the things that you swept under the rug, I, I want to meet you down here. If you want your breakthrough, meet me under the rug. The things that you, the things that your father didn't do, that you swept up, meet me under the rug. That's where you'll get your breakthrough. That your father didn't love you as a daughter, meet me under the rug. I'm under the rug. The things that you've been coping with, the things that you try to forget about, meet me in a low place and I'll give you the breakthrough that you've been looking for. In a low place. In a low place. I don't know who that word is for, but it's, it's in a low place. Let me give you these three reminders real quick as I get ready to close down. I feel like I'm becoming that preacher that keeps saying I'm closing. Don't ever close. But here's three reminders, family, to help us stay locked in like Murray. I'll write this down. The first one is this. <clears throat> what God says defines me. Simple. Simple. What God says defines me. Stop defining yourself by what you think others see, but rather by what you hear from your father. In order to hear what God is saying, we got to sit lo long enough. What is God saying to you? See, see, I love in Psalms 139 verse 14, it says this family, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My, my soul knows it very well. Your soul knows what God has been speaking to you. Your soul knows it. So here's what you do. You keep speaking it. Keep speaking. Speaking in the morning. Speaking on your lunch break. Speaking when your boss getting on your nerves. Even for my employees, if I'm getting on your nerves, keep speaking what God is saying. Just keep speaking it. Because your, no, your soul knows it. God is saying you are blessed. It's not what your eyes are saying or seeing. It's what God has said about your life. God said you are blessed. God said your marriage is healthy. God said he will heal you from that pain. God said you won't live in poverty. Come on. God said, so when you sit with him long enough, you hear it and now you speak it. Yes. You are under construction 
but you are also a constructor. God has created you to be a constructor. And he's teaching you how to use your words to create. Let there be light. When there wasn't any light, God showed us as a creator, even in the midst of chaos and darkness, he's always creating. You are a human. Hue, that means color. Man, manatee, the creator. God created you to relieve color in the world. It's inside of you. It's the seed inside of you. I am also under construction, but I am a constructor. So I can release color in the world for the beauty of what God is doing. So when I look at my marriage, I speak health. Come on. When I look at my kids, I speak health. Come on, somebody. When I look on my job, I speak health. I release color. Color is a beautiful thing. I can spend some time right now on that. Come on. God is not calling you just to live a life of black and blue. God is calling you to release color into it. When you release color, you release a beautiful picture. God is using you as a vessel in this season to release color in a situation that just seemed black and blue. Gloomy. God is saying, I want to use your words to release color. My second point is this. You have what it takes. I'm keeping it simple today. I'm sorry, you wanted a PhD theology points? Come next week and it probably still won't be here. We keep it simple because you have what it takes. You have to tell yourself that. The vision and the prayers, what I tell you last, last quarter, we're praying big prayers this year. Yes. You have what it takes, not because of you, but because of the greater that lives inside of you. Yes. We have what it takes as a church family Amen. to touch this area, but also God has given us the vision to be a global church. There's people online right now that's across the pond listening to and being in the midst of worship. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, our team is working extremely hard. Matter of fact, we're going to be having live streaming in a couple weeks. Come on. Where people are going to be able to tune in at 1030 to worship. This is all because of your prayers, your generosity, your serving, that there's lives that's getting ready to be changed because of what God is doing in the midst of this church. Let's not stop praying big prayers because God is using our prayers to change the world. God is using you to change the world, you have what it takes. Psychologists and other social scientists have repeatedly confirmed that you do what you do because of what you think about yourself. If you think you are incredible because of what God has placed inside of you, you can become it. See, 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 what's the thoughts that's in your life? This is a great time with self-awareness. Come on. That's what, my, that's what my therapist says, Anthony. Let, let's unpack that, Anthony. He's just got such a calming voice. I was like, man, how do you do that? Maybe I can counsel people better, Dr. Peter. Can you teach, do they teach you that? I need you to unpack that, Anthony. I need you to take some self-awareness, Anthony. Because the more you take a self-awareness, you begin to get to the thoughts that doesn't align with God is speaking over your life. And now in the lies, that the enemy has been speaking, you begin, you begin to give spirit and energy to it, so now you actually agreeing with lies that come from hell and not agreeing with the confirmation that God is placing in your life. You begin to fulfill self-prophecies in your life, that's a lie. Say that you're not healed, that's a lie. Say that your marriage will never be healed, that's a lie. Whatever the enemy is speaking to you, it's a lie, and God is saying, do the opposite. Yes. Whatever the enemy is yelling at you, start speaking the opposite starting today. Amen. If he's saying that you're not beautiful, if he's saying that, and whatever he's saying, God is saying, that's a lie, and speak the opposite. Yes. Even when you don't feel it again, speak the opposite. Encourage yourself today. And my last point is this. I'm going to invite the worship team back up. Kind of already touched on it. The last one is this. His lies are not facts. The devil, I mean, the weapon the devil uses against you is the weapon of deception. And his primary target 
is your identity. So you see, I, I, I love this. I'm not, a, I'm not a hunter, but I did some research. How about that? And what I love about this family, just doing some research that duck hunters use as decoys to hunt ducks. Today, these decoys have gotten pretty fancy with the duck hunters. The, the decoys, come on, they, they quack like a duck. They move like a duck. They, they even look like a duck. To the point they got so good, Julius, is that the duck itself thinks the duck. The ducks are confused. So as the hunters are, are, are doing their thing in, and in fact that, that, that we, even when I look at these decoys, there's something different about a real duck and a decoy duck. They look the same, they move the same, they act the same, but it's something different. What's different about it? It's that one have life inside and the other one doesn't. So, so this is what the enemy does. He will bring thoughts in your life. It looks like God, sounds like God, it even moves like God. But here's the difference. One gives life, the other one doesn't. So, so what is, what, what's the thought that's in your life right now? And my question is, does it give life? If it doesn't give life, that's not God. If it's correction, correction still gives life. If it's consequences, consequences still give life. Ex Princeton still gives life. If it's a reminder, it gives life. See, the enemy can never give life. Never. He's the father of all lies. See, John 10.10 10 says this. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said it this way, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You just stand to our feet. Because I don't know who's that for right now. As you're kicking off this new year, 2023, going to be a better me. Come on. What's the, what's the one thing God is calling you to? Because the one thing God is calling you to, it brings life. It brings life to you. It brings life to bring you closer to God. It brings life to the people that's around you. It brings life to the, the ministry and purpose and calling that God has called you to. It brings life. The one thing, the one thing, put your mind on the one thing right now. I believe for everyone in here right now and then for our online family, God is calling you to focus on the one thing. Not the many details, the one thing. The one thing. The psalmist said it this way, one thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life praying this over our staff and early this week in our staff chapel. One thing is to sit in his house. See, this would be a year, family, where you won't find yourself sitting in the wrong houses. The house of frustration, house of disappointment, house of past mistake, house of condemnation, house of shame. We can all find ourselves drifting away and sitting in the wrong house. But the one desire, keep that desire, is to sit in the house of the Lord. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word today. It's that we have a desire, your Father, to sit at your feet. The one desire we have is to stay at the feet of our Savior. 
Everything that we need is found at your feet. Everything that we need is found in your presence. So we sit with you. Teach us how to sit in this season. Teach us not to be agitated or busy body and moving and easy, distracted, tossed here and there, but to have such a firmness to sit with you. Let us not chase after things in this season, but chase you. Your word says in Matthew 6, 33, that you said, Jesus, that if, if we were seek you first, your kingdom, your righteousness, if we were put the first things first, all other things will be added. So rewire our minds and rewire our hearts, even in this season, to learn how to put first things first. We put you first. Before our feet touches the floor in the morning, we put you first. Before we go on and check emails and touch the kids and our responsibilities, we, we put you first. Before we get to, to the job, we put you first. Before we grab a bite to eat, we put you first. To just teach us how to put you first. Because everything that we need is in the beauty of the Lord. And our heads and eyes are closed, heads are bowed. I want to do the salvation, uh, invitation of salvation. And maybe for, for our online family as well. We talked about the one thing that this relationship is impossible without our relationship with Jesus Christ. We thank you that we have a desire today to be connected. Maybe God is speaking to you right now. That God is saying, hey, I'm calling you back home. This is the homecoming, that, that desire. What, what better way to start the year with being reconnected back to Jesus? Maybe God is rededicating, saying, hey, rededicate. It's time to take your next best step. Let's pray this over you even right now. And collectively, as Pastor Brent even said, this is a community, so family, I want all of us to join in. Maybe there's somebody here right now. Maybe it's for our online family. We're praying for you right now. Just repeat these words. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. I repent. I'm a sinner. But thank you that you died for me. That you went into the grave. That you rose. I confess, I believe you are my Lord and Savior. Live in me, breathe in me all the days of my life. I confess you as my Savior. Come on, family, can we put our hands together? Oh, let's stay in this wonderful posture of worship. Holy, there is none beside you, Lord. This is one of my favorite parts of the service where we get to worship the Lord with our giving. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 in the New Living Translation says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Celebration Church is a generous church. And when God can trust that when he gives us that above and beyond, that we will funnel that back out and be generous so that the other people in the world will see him and thank him. This is our opportunity to shine his light brightly through our gifts. We're expecting an Ephesians 3.20 year church and how much more above and beyond when God knows that that which he blesses us, we will be blessing others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your generosity, for your generous gifts. Father, we thank you that regardless of the amount that you put on our hearts, that we will be trusted to, to be your hands and feet in the earth so that people will see you, Lord God. 
We thank you, Father God, for those who have to give and those who have a heart to give. Father, use us for your glory in Jesus' name. You see the different ways that you could give on the screen and for those of you online, it's so easy. And you know what, church? This is not the only offering time. Whenever God puts on your heart, when you're walking uh, to, to and from, when you're in the grocery store, we have this app. You can pull it out right there in the middle of the aisles and give at any time because this church is making an impact and we want to be a part of that. Amen. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, church. How's everybody doing today? All right, I know it's been mentioned, but we are super, super excited. Starting tomorrow, we're doing a church-wide prayer and fast, Woo! all right? Super, super excited. Listen, this is a time when we can just come together as a church and be supportive of each other because this is a time where all of us are gonna be going through the same thing at the same time. Um, there will be a QR code scan for resources. If you're new to fasting, there's another fast you want to try and resources. Please, please go to the QR code and find different uh, ways to fast. And, you know, the great thing about it is we know how the story ends. Um, you know, Jesus sacrificed himself. And look at the outcome, right? We read the Bible. He won. So how much more can we gain, as Pastor Ann talked about, by sacrificing for 21 days? And you're not going to be alone. We're going to do this as a church. So a little bit of sacrifice can do so much um, during this time. And, and pray for me because no oatmeal cookies and Pepsi is going to be hard, but I'm going to do no, it. No, pray for me. I know Pastor pray Ann for understands <laughs> oatmeal pies, but we'll, we'll get back to them shortly. As you just heard Julia say, tomorrow, church, say tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, that didn't sound exciting. Tomorrow. Tomorrow starts our 21 days of prayer and fasting. So simply text FAST23, F-A-S-T 23, to 703-844-1223, and the information is also there to get the Zoom link. This is our time, church, to get low to sit at the feet of Jesus, like Pastor Ant said, for 21 days together. Come as you are online, meaning camera on or off, 7 a.m. All of you might not want us to see 7 a.m., Leah, but Jesus does. So let's, as every morning as you can, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m., jump on the Zoom link. There's power in prayer and there's power when we pray together. Yeah, church. So listen, on January 27th at 7 p.m., we will come together as a church. Now, this is coming close to the, the end of the fast, and you've been, you've been dedicating your mornings to everybody getting up at 7 a.m., joining the prayer call. We'll see all you faces there, right? Or Amen. squares with Amen. your name on Amen. it. Amen. Amen. So January 27th, come join us as a church. Like I said, we're doing this fast together. We're sacrificing together. The leadership we have in this church with pastors Ann and Brenda, um, they just want to say thank you. So we want to come together as we're coming to an end of our fast just to spend some family time. You might need a, a little bit of encouragement because you'll be a couple days away from oatmeal pies. But come out together and join us as a family, church. And, and thank you so much for being awesome. And thank you to our amazing leaders, um, Pastor Brenda and, and Pastor Ann. Because not every church does this. Amen. They don't. But the fact that they're taking their time every morning to lean into our church, to lean into this community of believers to say a little bit of sacrifice can be watered in the low places so we can get what we want on the mountaintop, church. And Thank speaking you. of watering, on the 27th, we'll be at the garden. Is that is that not the be most beautiful metaphor of where we'll have our worship and that prayer? That was planned. At the garden, yeah. right? <laughs> well, as much as we love to spend this time with you, let us uh, pray our way out and decree the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you and smile upon you. May his countenance be upon you and he be gracious to you. And Father, we declare peace, peace, shalom as we go into this week. Protect us as we leave this place, but never your presence until we see you again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. on the prayer call. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a Have great a good week. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs>